Chapter 64, first part of Don Quixote from Servant is a treat about the Morisco record. Treating of the adventure which gave Don Quixote more unhappiness than all that had hitherto befallen him. The wife of Don Antonio Marino, so the history says, was extremely happy to see Anna Felix in her house. She welcomed her with great kindness, charmed as well by her beauty as by her intelligence. For in both respects the fair Morisco was richly endowed, and all the people of the city flocked to see her as though they had been summoned by the ringing of the bells. Don Quixote told Don Antonio that the plan adopted for releasing Don Gregorio was not a good one, for its risks were greater than its advantages, and that it would be better to land himself with his arms and horse in Barbary. For he would carry him off in spite of the whole Moorish host, as Don Gaia Rose carried off his wife and Lysandra. Remember, your worship, observed Sinco on hearing him say so, said that Don Gaia Rose carried off his wife from the mainland, and took her to France by land. But in this case, if by chance we carry off Don Gregorio, we have no way of bringing him to Spain, for there's the sea between. There's a remedy for everything except death, said Don Quixote. If they bring the vessel close to the shore we shall be able to get on board though all the world strive to prevent. As your worship hits it off mighty well and mighty easy, said Sanko. But it's a long step from saying to doing. And I hold to the renegade, for he seems to me an honest and good-hearted fellow. Don Antonio then said that if the renegade did not prove successful, the expedient of the great Don Quixote's expedition to Barbary should be adopted. Two days afterwards the renegade put to sea in a light vessel of six oars aside manned by a stout crew, and two days later the galleys made sail eastward, the general having begged the viceroy to let him know all about the release of Don Gregorio and about Anna Felix, and the viceroy promised to do as he requested. One morning as Don Quixote went out for a stroll along the beach, arrayed in full armor, for, as he often said, that was his only gear, his only rest the fray, and he never was without it for a moment, he saw coming towards him a knight, also in full armor, with a shining moon painted on his shield, who, on approaching sufficiently near to be heard, said in a loud voice, addressing himself to Don Quixote, illustrious knight, and never sufficiently extolled Don Quixote of La Manca, I am the knight of the white moon, whose unheard of achievements will perhaps have recalled him to thy memory. I come to do battle with thee and prove the might of thy arm, to the end that I make thee acknowledge and confess that my lady, let her be who she may, is incomparably fairer than thy Dulcinea del Toboso. If thou dost acknowledge this fairly and openly, thou shalt escape death and save me the trouble of inflicting it upon thee. If thou fightest and I vanquish thee, I demand no other satisfaction than that, laying aside arms and abstaining from going in quest of adventures, thou withdraw and betake thyself to thine own village for the space of a year, and live there without putting a hand to sword, in peace and quiet and beneficial repose, the same being needful for the increase of thy substance and the salvation of thy soul. And if thou dost vanquish me, my head shall be at thy disposal, my arms and horse thy spoils, and the renown of my deeds transferred and added to thine. Consider which will be thy best course, and give me thy answer speedily, for this day is all the time I have for the dispatch of this business. Don Quixote was amazed and astonished, as well at the night of the white moon's arrogance, as at his reason for delivering the defiance, and with calm dignity he answered him. Knight of the White Moon, of whose achievements I have never heard until now, I will venture to swear you have never seen the illustrious Dulcini. For, had you seen her I know you would have taken care not to venture yourself upon this issue, because the sight would have removed all doubt from your mind that there ever has been or can be a beauty to be compared with hers. And so, not saying you lie, but merely that you are not correct in what you state, I accept your challenge, with the conditions you have proposed, and at once, that the day you have fixed may not expire. And from your conditions I accept, only that of the renown of your achievements being transferred to me, for I know not of what sort they are nor what they may amount to. I am satisfied with my own, such as they be. Take, 
therefore, the side of the field you choose, and I will do the same. And to whom God shall give it may St. Peter add his blessing.